Hello everyone, how are you doing? I'm Pastor Ron Carpenter. I want to welcome you to Ron Carpenter Television and we are deep inside the encounter now as you can see it written behind me. And I'm just so excited about walking you through this journey of what God wants to do in our life, of taking us in the pit that we're in, the background, and moving us to the forefront. I have said over and over, grace always takes you like you are but it never leaves you like you are. Grace is a journey. The Bible says that we can come into the uh, throne room of God and obtain mercy and find grace. We can obtain means immediately seize mercy, but we have to find grace. Grace means what God has given us that we don't deserve. That is a journey. You will spend the rest of your life finding the things that God has prepared for you by His grace that you never deserved, you never earned, but He's prepared them for you anyway. We've been studying this journey in the life of Ruth, and now we've come to the part where her and Boaz are about to meet, where the true encounter of us and Christ, we come together and we meet, and that explosion takes place of heaven kissing earth and earth kissing heaven. Are you ready to find out what we're talking about here in the encounter? Don't go away, I really believe you're about to be blessed. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You don't own anything anyway. Everything you've been given, you have been given to steward and to manage it and manage it well. The voice that I have, I've been given to manage it. The energy I have, the time that I have, the resources that I have, they have been delegated to me for the efficient and effective use to God's intended end. So I cannot look at my talents, my skill set, and my time as though they are to be used for my advantages in life. They are to be used to the intent to which the owner of them has delegated them to me. I know that God didn't give everybody this skill set. So the skill set I have, I have to go to the owner and say exactly what are you wanting out of this skill set so I can effectively oversee my life and manage it in such a way that you're getting everything out of it that you wanted when you delegated it to Ron Carpenter for this time that he is here on the earth. I know you can't clap, but just swallow it like vinegar. Therefore, a new value system has to come into play where I learn when to say yes and I learn when to say no. When I learn when I need to be in a crowd and I learn where I probably need to be alone. When I learn that it's a time for me and when I learn that it's a time for sacrifice. Where I have to come into the, my, where I have to come into a very fine balance of how I'm doing everything in my life. Now that I am 49 and I'm not an old man, but I am older than I have ever been. <laughs> I can already feel myself beginning to shift my thinking in looking at the time, the energetic time that I have left in the earth and what is the highest and best use of that time that I have left in the earth. So therefore, I don't go everywhere that calls me and asks me to come preach. I tell more people no than I tell yes. Why? Because it's not the highest and best use of my time because at the end of my value system is not a check and a dollar bill. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying? Can I keep going further here? Somebody called the other day, and they said, I want to talk to you and your media team, as a good friend of mine, about your approach to TV because we've just been given TV opportunities. I said, you may not want to talk to me. They said, why? I said, because I've used a very controlled approach. And they said, what do you mean? I said, I could be on TV all day, every day, if I want to be a fundraiser all the time. I said, I have a very controlled approach to TV. Why? Because I do not want to spend 20 minutes of a 28-minute TV program begging folk to send me money because I got $50 million in TV bills, and so I'm giving out all, and I'm cutting my hair and giving people pieces of my hair, and I'm pulling buttons off my shirt and saying, touch one of them, and the Lord will heal you, and I'm selling handkerchiefs, and I'm giving them sand from Galilee and water from Canaan. 
campaigning and everything, trying my best to raise money and make the gospel look cheaper than Walmart and Target. I refuse to live my life like that because I had a set of value. God has delegated a kingdom to me, and I got to make sure that the kingdom is represented in a high way, not in a cheap way. Some of you ain't smiled or clapped yet, but hang on, I'm coming at you. I was first trying to grow this church, and we began to first hit our first little breakthrough that we had back in 1999. <laughs> there was a pastor I called and asked to have an audience with that shouldn't have never had a meet with me, but he did. I had a lot of questions, and I needed to see him, and he took a meet. I flew down to where he was. I'd been there about five minutes. And it was right when phones came out. The flip phone. Some of you ain't never upgraded. It, that, it, that thing, it's about time. It's about time. And I got a call and I pulled out that flip phone. He took the phone out of my hand. He said, you don't understand where I am. He closed the phone up. He said, you on my time now, son. He said, you don't ask for an audience with me so I can sit here and listen to you talk to somebody else. Just time after time, people challenging my thinking. People showing me the next level and people confronting my mindset and my weaknesses without me getting offended. But learning that that was not telling me how great he was and how small I was, but him giving me the first lesson of the next level is that you get in a great man's presence, you take his time wisely, and you don't sit there and hold on so you can talk to the babysitter. Somebody scream management. Somebody shout management. Somebody say, Let, take me higher, God. Somebody say, lift me up. Take me. God wants to rain. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. The thunder is clapping in the air. I see the lightning bolts about to shatter. And there is a sound of rain like I've never heard at redemption before. But it cannot rain on your life until you begin to take yourself higher and begin to examine every area of your life. Are you using? everything God gave you to the best of your ability. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to tap four people and say, we got to get our house in order. Tell them, we got to. You don't know what other people have done to get where they are. We just hate on them because of where they are. I'm sick of this hating on people culture. I'm sick of it. I am so sick of it. Anybody that gets anything or wins anything or does well, everybody just destroys them. I'm going to break that thing in the name of Jesus. It's time to celebrate people who make sacrifices. Celebrate people who work hard. Celebrate people who did whatever it took to get there. That took everything they did and made good decisions and managed their life well. It's time to celebrate those people instead of hating on them because it's an indictment against how lazy we've been. I got more. <laughs> in 
Now I've got the thing flipped on me. I have pastors of smaller churches. And they say, well, I remember. And you didn't have that big old church. I remember when you were like us. Maybe you done got too big for your... Like somehow I got here and lost my character. But what they don't understand about me is what I do understand about Jake's. That God having now give me international stewardship for me to jump on airplanes and go preach to 75 people does not mean I don't love folk. Does not mean I've gotten above my raisin. It means that is a terrible, terrible use of my time and energy in the kingdom. <laughs> and that's what people have got to get to. <laughs> the concept of management. The concept of understanding that life is choice driven. And one of the greatest gifts God gave you is the ability to make a decision. The kingdom is a government. The government is in charge of our resources. We should hold them accountable for how they use our resources. <clears throat> God sent Jesus to bring a government. The government starts inside of me. The greatest ability God gave me was to make godly decisions about my own life that could give me specific outcomes. Because as a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What does he reap? That that he sowed. That shall he reap. So God gave me the ability to make decisions, not do it for me, but to make decisions that cause it to happen. God did not come to do it for me. He come to give me the government to govern my life in such a way that the blessing I desire, I can do the decision that creates the outcome that God told me I could have. That's why he says, choose you this day whom you will serve. He didn't say, you going to serve me. He said, choose you this day. Who's a, in Deuteronomy 28, I put before you blessings and I put before you curses. Choose, choose, choose life. He's begging you to choose life. He's begging you to choose life. He's beg he says, you can bless yourself or you can curse yourself. It's your choice. How you going to respond to a problem? Judas went and committed suicide. Peter repented. What are you going to do? Same problem, same night. One went and killed himself. Another went and said, I'm sorry. You can bless yourself or you can curse yourself. It's your choice. How you going to respond to a problem? Judas went and committed suicide. Peter repented. What are you going to do? The Encounter, eight dynamic messages from Ron Carpenter designed to help you encounter greatness. The anointing of the Holy Ghost breaking curses. Your daddy's words are falling out of your head right now. God has got seeds of greatness in people and I'm ready for him to reign. But you've got to serve God and do what your hands have been given to do with all your might. I'm preaching this with such passion because some of you, this is your ticket to the next level. This eight message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Decisions, governing your life, <laughs> managing your life. There's a lot of you in here mad that you have no money, but you waste time. Yeah. 
I don't waste time. There is no downtime. When I'm in a car and I'm driving to one of our other campuses and I got two hours, something's in there teaching me. There is no downtime. I'm learning. Something's calling me higher. Something's offending my comfort zone. Something is teaching me. I'm on airplanes for four hours. I got my book downloaded, my iPad. I'm reading. I'm studying. I'm making myself better. And in the next seat, they're listening to music. Okay, then don't you get mad. And while I was investing in myself, you over there being entertained. And when I get an outcome that you don't get, don't you turn around and start hating on me because for four hours I was studying while you were listening to music. You ain't listening to what I'm saying in here. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Stand up and give Jesus 15 seconds to pray. God is about to reign. It's about to reign. Get your house in order. It's about to rain. Shout hallelujah. Yes. I got a little bit more. Then I'll quit. I don't want to contradict myself. And people thing I detest about social media is people take clips and take you out of context and no 90% of my critics battles could be overcome if they just listened to the whole sermon <laughs> Pastor Todd came up here and talked about Miracles and signs. I heard him when he was exhorting wonders and miracles. We have altar calls for miracles. This church believes every page in the Bible. We don't skip any of them. We believe in casting, we believe God's power to cast out demons, break curses, raise the dead. We believe in prophecies, tongues, interpretations, gifts of healings, miracles, wonders, faith. We believe in every bit of it. Do not take out of context what I'm saying. But miracles are dangerous to church people because miracles negate work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. You had your chance. <laughs> miracles are dangerous because miracles negate diligence and negate work. There is a thread of the miraculous from Genesis all the way through the whole thing. And everywhere that I, off the top of my head, can think, where there is a, the miraculous is performed, is where something was out of their control, or God was correcting a bad decision that had been made. Other than that, I do not ever see the miraculous. Israel was slaves. That meant they had no ability to make their own decisions. God gives them fire in the day because they can't do any better. He gives them a pillar at night, I mean, a pillar by day to cool them, a fire at night. There's nothing to drink in the desert. God gives them water from rocks. He lets quail fly low. He lets manna be on ground. Miracle, 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 miracle. Now we got into the promised land. Go read it. And from that day forward, the manna ceased, and God looked at him and said, tend it. You're in a different place now. Some of you have not recognized the new season you're in. And you're in a new place, but you want God to respond in an old way. 
and you want God to take care of you like you're in a wilderness and you don't know that you've already stepped hold of threshold into a new season which is the promised land and there ain't no manna and there ain't no water out of rock and there ain't no miracle in the promised land you got a good ground with seed in it now manage it steward it and work it and make it be what you want to be if you sow sparingly you will reap sparingly if you so generously you will reap generously whatever you do with the ground is what you'll get out of it whatever you sow is what you'll reap manage well you could have had a good woman no you wanted hot sauce well how's that working How's that working? Because she's 55 and now she's still trying to be hot sauce. You need a mama. You need somebody to help clean the house. And she's 55 and her honey cheeks hanging out her miniskirt. Because you had to have you some hot sauce. And now you're mad. It was your decision. Demons didn't do it. You could have had a good man. In fact, he asked you. No. He looked so good on that motorcycle. He didn't buy it. His daddy bought it for him because he's never worked a day in his life. But he looked so good on it. Well, how's that working? They came to Jesus and the Pharisees said, give us a sign. Work a miracle. Do something. Prove to us you're the son of God. Let me tell you what Jesus said in Matthew 16. He said, you bunch of hypocrites. He said, only a wicked generation keeps asking for miracles. Only a wicked generation keeps asking me to do what they now are in a season they can do for themselves. you can bless yourself or you can curse yourself it's your choice how you gonna respond to a problem Judas went and committed suicide Peter repented what are you gonna do the encounter eight dynamic messages from Ron Carpenter designed to help you encounter greatness the anointing of the Holy Ghost breaking curses your daddy's words are falling out of your head right now God has got seeds of greatness and people and I'm ready for him to reign but you've got to serve God and do what your hands have been given to do with all your might I'm preaching this with such passion because some of you this is your ticket to the next level this eight message series is available for your gift of forty dollars or more call in the next ten minutes and we'll include free shipping and an mp3 download card call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen you know what that's all the time we've got but I love the Word of God so many kingdom principles tucked away in the life of Ruth and we've been walking through it for a very long time. I hope you've not gotten bored, but I hope if anything, you've been drawn in to want a deeper walk with God. I'm really hoping and believing, praying, whether you believe it or not, yep, I pray, believe everything, everyone connected to me in any way that God's blessings 
would overrun in your life. And this is the part where I do two things, where I thank those who've so graciously been a part of our ministry and then encourage those who maybe haven't to come in and be a part of this giant redemption family. You know what? I just believe that whenever something goes out of your life for God, it does not leave your life, but it goes into ground and it comes back. And so many people have a difficult time giving because when they give, they see the thing leaving their hand as leaving their life. And uh, that may happen at the gas station, that may happen at the grocery store, that may happen when you buy a new pair of shoes, but when you're in the kingdom, what goes out from you doesn't leave you. It just goes to a place and then returns back to you larger than it left. I'm talking about sowing, I'm talking about giving. We are in the business of taking this message of Jesus Christ, hopefully translating it into as many languages as we can during my lifetime and taking it all over the world. We are already, you have helped us go all over the world. Now we wanna stay all over the world. We want to increase our presence all over the world, increase the kingdom message, and now translate it into people's known tongue. We have a great challenge before us and I'm just telling you, I thank those of you who've been a short time, a long time partner, or maybe you've just given a gift here or there when we've needed it and God's spoken to your heart. I'm grateful for the fact you love Jesus and I'm grateful for the fact that you believe in us. But anyone out there who like, you know what? I've been watching this program, I've been receiving. I wanna give back, I wanna help out. I believe in what they're saying, I believe in what they're doing, we could use your help. And I want to let you know, for your first time gift, whether you want it to be a one-time gift or whether you want to be a monthly contributor, for your first time gift of any amount, we have this very special offer just for you to say thank you to you. We want to be a giver back. We want to let you know how appreciative we are that you've made this investment in the kingdom and you chose to do it here. My prayers for you is that God would establish you and bless you and that God would repay you many times over that which you have given that God would reward you 30, 60, and 100 fold for every seed that you sow, and that the blessings of God would surround you and overtake you. We want to see everyone connected to us lead the blessed life, and we believe the keys of the kingdom can unlock doors where heaven invades your home. So I want you to connect with me, if you would, on a greater level too. Go to Facebook, go to Twitter, go to Instagram. I'm talking all the time giving nuggets all the time, pulling sermon clips all the time. Every once in a while, I just get the unction. I say, let me pray for some people. And we pray and just have a huge amount of people on there for those prayer times. I want to minister to you and be a source of life to you in any way that we can. So do what you can, if you would, to help us. Pray, ask God what he'd have you to do. And may God reward you and bless you openly for what you've done in secret. We thank you so much for being a part of every broadcast. Until I see you next time, God bless you. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry. And we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.